Monaducci, a life coach. Hey, Danny Monaducci, a life coach. It is time for Danny Monaducci, life coach. You want to give me a call right now? Here's the phone number 1 800 252 1025. Or you can send an email. We check our emails 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That address is lifecoach at kzok.com. Life coach brought to you by Goldberg Jones, Divorce for Men. Call 1 800 Divorce. Let's start with Alex in Lakewood. Good morning, Alex. How are you? I'm doing all right. How you doing, Danny? Real well. Thank you very much for asking. What can I do for you? Um, well, I- I'm not sure exactly how far along the process has gone just yet, but um, some friends of mine are on the edge of divorce. Right. And um, my buddy, the the guy in, in the in the relationship, um, suspects that his wife uh, is cheating on him, and. I was wondering what kind of proof, if any, uh, would help him when it comes time for court um, proving that she that she's been cheating on well, him. Well, first of all, let me say this: if your friend's uh, uh, thinking that his wife is cheating, I'm going to go with there's a 72 percent chance that she is. You don't think that for no reason. Um, you know, you can be paranoid, but then it's a consistent thing in your friend's <clears throat> in your friend's marriage. He always thinks somebody's cheating because he's paranoid. But after a year or two, ten years, whatever it is, he starts. Hey, what's this? I wonder about this. Uh, and I'm I'm right here. Everybody's been around for these phone calls that where there's smoke, there's fire on this. It's, I'm going to go a two-third chance that the person that they believe is cheating is actually cheating. Having said that, here's how divorce goes. She's cheating while selling drugs and ignoring the welfare of her own children. Or she's doing none of those things and she does bake sales. The divorce ends up exactly the same way. We're in what's called a no-proof and no-fault state in the state of Washington. It means if she does all those terrible things I just said... She might still get the house. She's definitely going to get half the house. It's, they don't care who did what because it will clog up the court system too much. So if your friend and his wife decide to get a divorce, nobody has to prove anything. Nobody has to be right. The judge's not even going to ask. Nobody's even going to ask if she was cheating. So everything ends up the same way. So your friend, who I'm worried about, and I'm glad he has a good friend like you, can just go divorce her and it's going to end up exactly the same. And just tell him to keep his mouth shut. He doesn't even need to bring up that he thinks she was unfaithful. Nobody cares but him. Good luck there, Alex. It is funny how we are so conditioned to thinking if somebody does something bad that it's, it's going to impact yeah. it. And no. it doesn't. That's funny. 800-252-1025. If you've got a question for the life coach, he is here to help you. You can divorce somebody in prison and they're still going to end up with half the stuff. Yeah. That's just the way it goes. Looks like we have a follow-up call from uh, oh. Jason in Puyallup. Hey, Jason. What's up, buddy? Hey, Danny. How you doing? I'm real well. Thank you for asking. So, I called you a while back a few times, actually, about uh, do I move to New Zealand or not move to New Zealand. I remember no. you. What's, uh, so, have you made any uh, uh, concrete choices? I'm actually uh, got two more weeks at my job. The next week, all my stuff's being packed up, and then the following week, I'm on a plane headed south. All right, let me, first, let me just say this. Congratulations. No matter what you're doing, no matter what crisis you're going on, uh, I don't want to say it's a good move as opposed to what you were doing or anything, but what an adventure, man. And New Zealand, it's not like you're going to the deepest, darkest parts of Africa where there's lots of snakes and stuff and you don't know what's happening. Uh, New Zealand is a lot like here if it were sunnier and everybody had a sailboat. I think you're, I think, you know, they got Lord, they got that going for him, and I think that's about it. Guy from uh, ACDC. Guy from ACDC, straight, you know, trying to kill some people over there. But it's a wonderful country. Uh, it, it really is. It's a giant, because it's not small. People think of it as tiny. It's tiny compared to a continent, like as neighbors, Australia. But there's, I, I think there's at least 7 million people, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, living in New Zealand, the capital city being Auckland. I think you're going to have a great time. Now, is there a downside to any of this? Because I just think it's the greatest thing ever. Well, downside, I, I'm not. I'm going there without a job, so I'm kind of nervous about that. Do you, I, do you have a work? Do you have a work visa? I'm actually a dual citizen, so I don't have a problem with that. Oh, okay, dude. I think I think you are going to be so. I think it's going to be re- reliving college years for a while. I don't know what it's going to end up in the future, but I think around the board. Pop, uh, uh, positive. They like Americans there a lot. They're not one of those countries that hates Americans. You're going to be exotic over there. And uh, 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 are you a big fan of women, are you there, Jason? Oh, yeah. Well, they got a whole <laughs> bunch of them there, and they're real pretty, and they're tan. I envy you. Oh, my wife's listening right now going, oh, you do, do you? Not for me, of course. I hate that stuff. 
but for you, it's a giant, <laughs> a giant beach community. That's why I can look at it. Is it really? It's a country. It has to function, but it's a great place, and I think you're gonna have a great time. And I'm, you know, I'm jealous. I think about that stuff all the time. You know, Sans wife and uh, kids. Um, you think about that other stuff. Well, I'm just gonna drop everything. I'm gonna go to New Zealand because it's awesome there, man. Good luck on that. And like I said, I think you're gonna be very happy you did this. Have fun, Jason. And remember, you can podcast us at yeah, KZOP. yeah, yeah. Com. And you can call Life Coach uh, uh, Blind if you don't know what's happening. Work out the time zone thing. And if one of these beautiful suntan girls uh, I was telling you about punches you in the nose or something, and you need life coaching, you give us a call or email Life Coach at KZOK. I like the calling thing. From New Zealand. Yes. we're the, <laughs> First of all, we're toll free at 1-800-252-1025. So I think he has to call us sometime tomorrow. But that will work. And there might be a country code involved. There yeah. might be. Who knows? What, Jason, he can handle it. He's my pal. Layla is calling from Historic Kent. Layla, you are on with the Life Coach. Hey, Layla. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. I agree with your... Uh, uh, Vote for New Zealand. It's great yeah, place yeah. Been there. And the not being you know, like he's packing up th today and he's going there next week. I think it's going. He's going to be so glad he did it, even if it doesn't work out perfect. The story he gets to tell later. So what can I do for you, Layla? So I've been married for twenty six years, yep. and I've got more of a roommate than a husband. And I'm kind of thinking, you know, I'm I'm getting near fifty, and I kind of think I deserve maybe another chance or a better. Option. Well, first of all, and I don't want to dog your husband because I don't know him, and I'm going to try and save, you know, the, um, I'm going to look at the sanctity of marriage as a good thing. But there's part of what Layla's saying and what you're saying, sweetheart, that's, you know, she wants the the new uh, New Zealand. She wants to make a light, uh, leap into a new and exotic life. You know what? Here's the difference, Layla, is New Zealand exists just the way I said it. What the new partner you might want might not be there at all, let alone exactly how you want to. So what, what's, tell me about this roommate situation, because sometimes, you know, is it the sex thing? It's everything. It's, you know, basically I, we come home, he surfs and sits in his recliner and that's it. And oh, you okay. know, if I, I don't love him. Yeah. And, and here's, here's the thing, because I was thinking, you know, if it's the actual act of sex, uh, we can go a pretty long time in my house, and that's that's my that's my doing. Amy's not holding out on me. That's that's my doing. So sometimes we look like roommates, and I couldn't be happier. Well, this not a lot of stress in my marriage. Things are great. Apparently, that's not the you know, this guy's. He's real active and doing stuff without you. Like he surfs by himself. What, what other kind of hobby, hobbies does he have that don't include you? Uh, lots of gardening. <laughs> Don't divorce the gardener. Are you kidding? <laughs> the is they make topiaries. They're just so cute. So here's the thing. Um, if you need, and when I say you need my permission, I just mean if you need the permission of the cosmos, if you will. Uh, has he done anything wrong to you? No. no. I mean, he's responsible. He's got a job. He's he's stable. We've got two kids that are almost grown. Yeah, you got to be you got to be careful here. You might actually have exactly what you want and you you can find it out within a week or two of making this jump and going, "Oh man, I shouldn't have done this." And then it might be too late. He might not take you back. Um but if you want to jump, if you and that's your only reason to to leave your husband would be because he he doesn't hang out with you. He surfs and he's kind of lazy around the house. Yeah, just it doesn't even relate. There's no, there's no companionship. There's no. I didn't think I'd be lonely being married. Oh, that's the thing. Absolutely, that is. I, I get what you're saying. Absolutely. Um, and I, I think here's what you should do, Layla. You should talk to your husband, and I'm guessing that you have. You don't come to this point without talking to your partner. Then I think you should see, seek some therapy, and then. You have the right to be happy. If no matter what, if you go, if you talk it out all day, you know what, honey, why we don't really do things together, and then you do things together, and you think, well, that's not that that great. You know what? You have a right to be happy. And if you're the kind of girl that I think you are, Layla, because you got what I was saying, jump to New Zealand. It's going to be great. I think the adventure, even if you're wrong, is going to be thrilling. So that, with having said that. You know, talk to your husband. Therapy, those two things first. And when, if and when that doesn't work, you go ahead and you leave and you find out what life is out there for you. And I hope something really, really cool is waiting around the next corner. Good luck. Uh, Life Coach is 800-252-1025. The email is always available to you, lifecoach at kzok.com. Susie in Seattle writes, my nephew recently overdosed and died at the young age of 21. Super sorry about that. His girlfriend, who had been doing drugs with him, confided in me that she was pregnant with his child. Most of my family hates her and the feeling is mutual. 
This woman has two other children that are in foster care. My question is, do we have any rights to the newborn? This woman is still doing drugs. We have a very functional family and we would raise the baby and would give it everything. Can we, and do you think we should, fight for custody? Uh, yes, and up to you, boy, is that a thing? Because that baby comes with a lot of drama. That baby comes with a drug-addicted parent. I don't know what her parents are, are like because she's a young woman. I'll bet they're still alive. Uh, she is uh, a huge disappointment to them. But you might not be the only people that want that baby. You're going to have to maybe deal with a fight. And I, I would put my money on that her parents are going to say something about that, that baby. Because as you know from your, I believe it was your nephew, is that correct? As you know from your nephew's death, really nice people get addicted to drugs. This girl can be okay. And certainly her parents can be okay. I wouldn't vote. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, uh, uh, I wouldn't bet that she's all around fun and nice to be around. But as you know from your nephew... Drug addicts can, can be all right people. It happens to the nicest. What's that expression? Herpes happens to nice people, too. Well, the same thing with, with uh, <laughs> believe me, that was an, I had that T-shirt, man. Did you man. use that one a lot? <laughs> uh, well, you have to make the girls that got them feel better about themselves. Uh, but seriously, bad, good thi I mean, bad things happen to good people. Uh, but yeah, how, let's get right to your question. Yes, you have all sorts of legal ab avenues to sue for custody of that child. And if uh, it goes the way I think it will, it shouldn't be that difficult. She might, depending on what a drug addict she is and what I'm going to say is kind of awful, she might jack you for money. Yeah, you can have the kid 10 Gs. That can totally happen. Now, she can just go, oh, thank God you're here to take care of this baby. I was so worried about it. That one can happen, too. But be ready for some kind of drama. Nobody's just going to give you this kid. But your question is, do you have any legal rights? And the answer is, yeah, absolutely. Hire a lawyer. Start today. Melvin in Lake Forest Park has sent an email to the life coach. I have been married for a little over a year. And recently, my wife and I set a goal to pay off our various pay loans off. and to get out of debt. I have a personal credit card bill of over $1,000 that she doesn't know about, and she'd probably get mad if she found out about it. I have plenty in my personal savings to be able to pay it off, but she would see the missing money and then inquire. How do I go about paying off this debt without her knowing and uh, uh, without approaching the subject with her? Well, the, there's two answers here. One, you don't. You don't want to start out like this. You tell her. You, you say, hey, I got this thing. We're going to have to pay it off. We're going to have to work harder. That gives you the opportunity to work through something together. I think that's exactly the way to go. Then, you know, how do you pay this off without her knowing? It's kind of easy. Uh, if you got cool parents, uh, you owe your parents money. And so you have to write them a personal check for a thousand bucks. They cash it. They pay off your money for you. Same thing with a friend. You did car damage on a friend's car. Getting a friend to lie for you is kind of no big deal. But I, I got to tell you, there's a million ways to come up with why I need X amount of money to pay off this this thing where she won't know. But the real and the right answer to this one is tell her. She will know. You'll work through it together. You'll be a much stronger company because this is coming again. This isn't the last time this situation is coming in your life. Bills are going to mount up. You don't know where you're going to get the money. Um, you don't want her hiding money from you, and that's the thing you're going to tell her. Hiding money in this relationship's okay. The answer to this question is tell her and pay it off together. Hey, that's all the time we have for Danny Bondici, Life Coach. Thank you so much for uh, the phone calls this morning and also the emails as well. Uh, Life Coach is sponsored by Goldberg Jones, Divorce for Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE.